Hi there buds, I'm outside of my spider farmer grow tent and I'm back with another grow update and I'm so excited about this one. If you guys have been following along my grow um, journey with all of the different grow tents and all of the different grow cycles I've had um, in the past couple months, you guys will know that <laughs> rarely do I exit a grow with all of the plants looking good and making it to maturity and just like being buds that I'm super proud of. I'm honestly super proud of all of these plants. Um, two of them are already harvested. Well, they're not harvested, but they're up hanging for drying right now. And there are four in here that are in the stages of either about to flower or already in flowering. Everything in here is an auto flower and like literally they all look healthy. Like none of them have any yellowing to them. None of them have any discoloration. The leaves look like a nice normal size cannabis plant. Like I'm super proud of these plants. And they were all grown under the Spider Farmer SE7000 who is the sponsor of today's video. Spider Farmer is the manufacturer of LED grow lights that are meant for home growers as well as commercial growers. And so far so good, it's been doing really well for me. And I did have to say that the tent that they provided as well has been like literally the most quality tent. I mentioned that in the first unboxing video of all this equipment. It actually has like a double line place for the zipper so there are literally no light leaks out of this tent, which is nice because this is my home theater and I want it to be dark. The Spider Former SE7000 is a bar style grow light meant for a 5x5 foot grow tent. It features a removable driver to keep the heat out of your grow tent, Samsung diodes, and a 5 year limited warranty. Spider Farmer is also the first company to send me over a smart fan for my grow tent and that literally changed my whole world. Like literally the tents are at least 75% more quiet than they were with a traditional inline fan. They don't kick on as much whereas they used to run 24 hours a day. And overall I think that that's part of the reason these plants are so happy is because the atmosphere inside has been perfectly controlled at all times. I've had the perfect humidity, the perfect temperatures, ideal growing conditions for cannabis the entire growth cycle and I think that that's made a huge difference in these plants. So if you're going to invest in a quality grow light make sure to invest in a quality grow fan as well because the fan I feel like that's like a big part of this whole setup. If you guys are interested in anything needed to grow cannabis check out Spider Farmer and you guys can use code buds and beards to save some money on your purchase. And without further ado let's get into this grow update. I think I'm going to show you guys what's in the tent first and then I'll show you guys what I just chopped down about what was it two days ago? I think it was about two days ago. So this is what we have going on in here. Right here we have a Northern Lights Double XL auto flower plant looking very healthy. Leaves are a nice size. And no complaints on her. She looks really good, right? Oh my god, you guys. So I was reviewing that footage and I know that there's probably already some people in the comments like, oh my god, I see something wrong with that plant. And I do too now. Oh my god. I'm so glad that I looked at the video footage because I never would have seen this in person. But this has thrips. This plant literally has thrips. Like there are small, little white specks on this plant. I, I think you can see them in there. They're so tiny. It is literally so tiny. Um, oh no. Literally none of the other plants in this garden, I think this one really shows up. You can see one right there. Literally, that's a threat. So I'm gonna go grab some insecticidal soap and spray this thing down. I really feel like I should quarantine this thing, but I don't really have anywhere to quarantine it. Ooh, I might put it like over in the corner of the tent, like by itself, um, and really spray this down with insecticidal soap. Um, yeah, ooh. I'm gonna go ham with this stuff. Oh my God, pests freak me out. I have, feel like I've been kind of fortunate with pests, or at least maybe I haven't been educated enough on them to even see them in a lot of my past grows, but I feel like literally I've had spider mites in one of my grows one time, and I didn't realize it. I didn't really know what it was. It was in one of my first grows, but I feel like I normally don't have to 
deal with pests and anytime I see one I literally it makes me like cringe like it makes my skin crawl because I hate bugs like I can't deal with bugs in my house I'm super soaking this thing like I swear I'm not I'm not about it you guys <laughs> I, I, insect, insecticidal soap is literally just like, it's like a little bit of soap, water, and then I think they're, I don't know what else is in here. I don't, I don't know. I was going to tell you guys what exactly was in it, but literally down at the bottom, it just says active ingredient, um, 1%, which is potassium salts of fatty acids, and then 99% other ingredients. So I don't really know what it is, but I do know that it's for organic gardening. So I know that it'll be totally safe for cannabis. That's the most important thing that you want to look for when you're looking for like some type of pest control thing to use in your grow tent. You want to make sure that it says for organic gardening, because this is something that you consume. So things that are safe for like fruits and vegetables, um, food safe things are normally a go, but I always try to go for like the least aggressive thing that I can think of to control pests before going with something heavy duty. Right now, really the only two things that I use in my grow tent for pest control is I use mosquito bits and I use them in the soil and I also use them every time I water as like a tea for my plants and that keeps the most common pest that I deal with which is fungus gnats away because I occasionally overwater. they like damp soil sometimes I'm watering my canvas plants once every couple days probably three days when they get into like super heavy flowering and um because of that uh having wet soil is just a breeding ground for fungus gnats so I try to um keep them at bay before they even become a problem because they have been a problem for me in the past so I just kind of always use mosquito bits and then yeah the other thing that I use is this garden safe insecticidal soap um both products are 100% organic I almost put her over there and I'm like nope she's not going over there everything else is staying way over there and she's going over there right now I'm probably about to do a thrip check for these like super duper quick just to make sure that there's no thrips because now I'm like scared this is another northern lights double xl I cannot tell you why it's so much farther along um I honestly can't remember if I planted these at the same time or if I planted them like staggered I'm assuming staggered seeing as this one is like way further ahead as you guys can see their buds all over this plant I need to come in and just trim up her leaves just a little bit she is an auto flower so normally on auto flowers you really don't have to worry about pruning too much but when it's looking this leafy I'm like it's covering up some of the bud sites on the inside so I definitely think I need to trim her up just a little bit but she has looked very very healthy this entire time as well nice size leaves no discoloration I think I'm getting better at this you guys leave a comment down below what do you think her buds are obviously still developing she's nowhere near maturity but right now she looks good look at this like double bud <laughs> it almost looks like a heart a heart shaped bud this right here is a northern lights auto plant I know three northern lights and one one thing but they're by two different breeders the first two were double XL um, and I'll put the name of the breeder up here and then this one was by Expert Seeds if I remember right and I feel like I'm repeating myself but like all the leaves look like a nice healthy size that is something um, different for me because sometimes my leaves look like they just almost like they're like stunted or something they just are a little bit small um, but like in this grow all of my leaves look really nice really big all my plants look super lush if I were gonna say anything that I changed differently I would say that I definitely fed these plants a lot less so instead of giving them fertilizer every watering I was doing it like every other watering this time um, but I was still following like the actual Fox Farm fertilizer recipe recommendation I didn't dilute it at all I just watered with it less often if that makes sense 
um, and I think it's helping out my plants. I think that they were getting a little bit of nutrient burn and just not able to uptake all those nutrients and then it just caused problems but I think we've got it pretty much under control now. She's not flowering yet either. There are no signs of flowers on her yet but like I said any day now she's going to be flowering too. Now if I have to say that any plant is a struggle plant I would say it was this one. Um, it's a Gorilla Girl XL Auto which I grew in my last grow cycle and it actually grew well but this time it sprouted and then immediately started flowering which if you guys have watched my grow series this is something that happens to me with autos occasionally like sometimes they will wait a little bit of time and actually mature and then butt out you know like this one how you would want it to and then sometimes they literally just sprout and um immediately start flowering the flower like the bud is normally pretty good from it it's just not a lot and it kind of is almost like a waste of time because it's so much energy like taking care of a cannabis plant feeding it watering it pruning it everything else then giving it all this energy with the grow light and everything it's like you want it to produce more than just a couple buds but occasionally this happens to me if anybody else has any experience with that or knows why that happens leave a comment down below um our community is for learning here obviously i'm not an expert so you guys are getting to see a beginner go through and try all different things and i think that i'm getting better so you guys are getting to see it get better i think like it, the leaves look super healthy on this one too um there's really nothing wrong with this plant other than that it sprouted way too early but like I'm not seeing like any like discoloration in the leaves or anything no spotting nothing showing me that any of my plants are unhealthy which I'm super happy about because that isn't always the case for me so I would consider this grow going pretty damn well so far all right now that I've showed you everything going on in the grow tent let me show you everything that I harvested it's only two plants but I think I should show you guys what harvested out of this tent so far as well. Ignore the noise. That is from my old inline fan and you guys can hear how fucking noisy it is in my office and why I talk about so much how important it is to get a good inline fan. Anyways, this is the Red Gorilla Girl plant I harvested. I would say this is like average um, size buds like for me. They're not the biggest. They're not the smallest. It definitely has a reddish hue in this light. The bud looks pretty good. I don't really have any complaints about it other than the buds are just a little small. They're not dwarf or anything like that, but I've definitely grown bigger. But that was the first plant. And this is the middle finger bud, which I don't know what strain it is. I lost the label. Like literally, I normally put a piece of tape on the bucket that it's planted in and that's normally how I can keep track of what's in what but it literally didn't have a piece of tape on it and I couldn't find the piece of tape so I don't know what this is. What I will say is when I was trimming off the leaves it smelled like I was cutting fruit like literally like cantaloupe or something or melon like it, it had like a musky fruity smell to it that was like so good so I'm so excited to try it. I wish I knew what it was it looks kind of dark maybe it's like a purple type strain I definitely had the problem where it flowered as soon as it sprouted as you can see it just like sprouted and then boom immediately flowered but the buds look really good and I'm really excited about trying this one anyways that's my grow update for the spider farmer SC 7000 I would say things are going really well wouldn't you guys like I keep asking you guys because I'm like kind of shook that they all look so healthy like I normally I almost feel like I'm embarrassed when I'm showing like my, my grow video like my harvest or every anything because there's so many like expert growers on YouTube where it makes like me as a beginner just feel like absolute crap but like I'm proud everything looks good um and I think this is like another harvest that's gonna be really really good I think I've had one that went well really like really really well 
and I think this is like my second harvest that I think I'm gonna actually be proud of. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of my grow. I think I've asked enough time, so hopefully you guys will um, leave that comment because I want to know how I'm doing. I genuinely want to know. Anyways, I'm out. My birthday is tomorrow, so I'm going to go celebrate my birthday, and I'll see you guys around for whatever stony activity or video I come up with for next time. Bye, guys.